there's the cube. There it is, the same size ring, and right in the middle, there's a cube. Hard to see. And in that cube, I can put a sphere. There's the sphere. The red sphere. That is the same one that I showed you before that sits inside here. So the cube, okay, you can see the cube, and you see the sphere in it. Got to be the right size. And that particular sphere is exactly the size of the core of the Earth, and this is the crust of the Earth. So the chestahedron, okay, in the sphere, okay, is balancing the size of the core of the Earth and touching all, all four points. Now I've eliminated the top so you can see it. So, I add the flower of life. Now the chatahedron is in the, in the copper sphere, or circle, and the aluminum that's on the outside is the complete flower of life. So the chestahedron There's the center. And you know that this is where I found the chestahedron. This right here. That's the outside of the earth. And that's the core. And that's this relationship that you see here. Except this part, okay, what the heck is it? You know, I know that now that the seed of life, which is this one, is the size of the earth. We've never known how the flower of life fits in the sphere of the earth in relationship to the core. Now we do. But what's this out here? The mantle. So I'll show you what that is. I knew you were going to ask. <laughs> okay, I'm so happy with this. I'm so excited by the geometry for you guys. That I made a big model. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend you come up and look at this thing after this is over because you look at the geometry in there. I've got red lines with strings and rubber bands and all that kind of stuff that shows you now what is on the outside, what is then the outside of this thing that's aluminum and also is between that blue line and those two black lines. What is that? It's a cube! <laughs> there is a cube that goes entirely around the earth just like there is a cube that goes around the core of the earth inside which is also in a cube so this is so as below as above huh as above so below so that the geometry that's coming around from this whole thing is not only happening on the outside but it's happening on the inside and that's what this part right over here is, is a cube. Wow. So if I take, here's the cube. A hexagram, huh? I saw like, wow, it's a hexagram. And you already know that a hexagram makes a cube. Now you know that the circle is inside. And that's what the geometry of this whole thing looks like. So the flower life now, which is the most profound two-dimensional geometry ever in the history of mankind, the flower of life is the most profound two-dimensional. It's now three dimensions. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I, uh, I, I'm so pleased that I can bring this to you. I can share, you with, share this to you because you see there's something behind this. Now, what, what is it? What is behind? Who did this? <laughs> you know what I mean? There's got to be something there. And this is unseen. You can't see a cube around the earth. But it was scaffolding that was there once. Now, if you think about this, as I have this new research center opening up a week from today in San Carlos, California. And one of the things I have some people that are really interested in what I found here is that around the earth there could be a ring. Just like there is around Saturn and Neptune. But we can't see it. That doesn't mean it's not there, though. 
So there is a possibility, if we know the size of it and the geometry of it, then some kind of research could be done to look for it. Because the scientists don't know to look for it, they have no clue that's left there, or that it has a possibility. So this is the unseen is bringing us maybe into something we can see in reality. So how would you try to find if there is a ring coming up from the equator of the Earth? Good luck. <laughs> now, so I want, I hope you like this because there's another amazing thing coming here. Okay. The chetahedron inside the sphere you saw. And you saw that this was the core. It's a flat. The size right here. And then this, this part right here goes around the outside of that. And then the red line is the chestahedron. And this is the part of the star that made the star of David that became the sphere of the earth. So I found out that if I take a cone, here's a cone, that if I take a cone, it goes around the outside of the chest of And it touches this one, this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. It happens to be 26 degrees. Now I also found out that I also could put the same cone. So here's for, I want people to realize that this is the same cone. It's 26 degrees. And the way I can really show that is I can take a cone, a bigger cone like this one, and I can show you that it's the same size. See that? And then I can show you that this is the part that was cut off. Mm -hmm. See that? Look. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the same size cone. No kidding. <laughs> okay. So if I take a cone this size, Yeah, and I put the chestahedron in it. You see that the bottom of the chestahedron and the cone are on the same level. Now, if I take this off, and I get rid of the big cone, put this back on, you know that this is the same size cone, and that's exactly where it has to be cut. Because that's at the top of a sphere. This is the top of where the sphere hits, and this is the top of the very apex of the sphere. So if I take this right here and I put it inside here, it goes right up to the top and I cut the chestahedron and you can see the red part, that there's no cheating. That red part goes right up to the apex, okay, of the chestahedron, right to the apex. Now, this doesn't quite uh, go up to the top and this thing's sticking out here at the top, or at the, at the bottom, this thing sticks out. You know how it sticks out? Well, I got to get my scissors and cut that off. <laughs> yeah, not allowed. That's very tempting. <laughs> so, if I take the spheres again, and I put this into a sphere, like that, and then I take another one, it has the same size hole as that cone coming out. I can put this on top. <coughs> I got to get to where it snaps there. <laughs> A little tape here just in case this is what happens. <laughs> And this is so cool. Tuck tape. So what I'm trying to do is prove that this chestahedron is in the earth. And how do you do that? With a shovel? <laughs> this is the only way you can do it. So there it is. There's the chestahedron with the cone, the red point. And I can take that cone right there and take it out. And this cone hits exactly the top of the sphere. And that point hits the top of the top of the sphere. So now we have a ring 
And this one, we have the other ring, which is the same cone. It's the same cone. Look at that. I didn't do anything. How, how would I have known where to cut this off so that that would hit the sphere? I would have known that. Okay, so this is another thing that's trying to say that there is a design behind the Earth and there may be something in it. So what I did is I took and I made the same size cone. Okay. Same one, stick it up at the top. And I take that cone and I put it in this model. So now the point touches, I'm going to show you that the point touches the apex. This is called the apex of the heart. Okay, and this part sticks out. And I can put this into a sphere. white circle and the bottom all work. Okay? Same thing. Now if I take this apart, I can take this top part off. And now that part and that part are on the equator. I can put this back. And you can see that it fits the equator. And if I take the sphere that was in the chestahedron from this design and I take it off, it fits exactly in that hole. Okay, so I mean, look, look at, look at this. It says, what is going on here? So if you take this little guy out, I put it in here, yeah, goes down the bottom, and I drop this guy into it. That's exactly in the middle. Hmm. <coughs> then I can put this back, put it back in the sphere, and that sphere, in relationship to the cone, is a core of the earth. Exactly. Oh, I'm going to draw something on a board here that's pretty amazing. If I take these two cones, so here are the two cones. This will go around here like this. A little bit not quite right. I have to make an accurate like this, and this is. This is something else. <laughs> Since this, you know that the sides of a chestahedron and the internal shape of the internal of the chestahedron are parallel. They're both 26 degrees. This is 26 degrees. This is 26 degrees. So if I draw this here, here's the cone. Here's a wider one. And at the bottom, there's this size. And you know that those are both the same size because they fit together. So this circle at the top here and this circle are the same, same size. Now, all the research that's being done throughout the world for I don't know how many years, they draw a sphere like this and they say that inside the earth there's this shape. And I've seen this a million times. It's two cones sitting together at the, eight, at the very center of the sphere. They come together. But nobody ever thought that you could take a sphere and that this circle and this circle, which are the same, can be the same in this shape. This circle and this circle are the same. Paradox. See the difference in thinking? This is a different in consciousness here. What, this comes from 13 years of work. 
This isn't just thinking, oh, well, I think that's what it does, because these two circles are the same. And we got this idea, you know, of magnetic things going like this and all that stuff. Well, okay. But there's, this is also making sense. This is just as good as this one. But, I'm going to race ahead here with this guy and see what we have. Um, oh, well, yeah, here's the core of the Earth. I know it's perfectly accurate because I've got all the measurements. All those measurements are accurate. Okay, here is the Northern Lights, which is what you're experiencing around here. Well, the Northern Lights at the top, okay, so that would be the north, would be represented here. This ring, okay, <coughs> is this one. And the outer ring is this one. You see that? No one, none of the scientists can explain why there is an oval. The reason is, is because if you look at the top view, of this one, it looks like this. It doesn't go inside this ring, and it doesn't go outside that ring. And it has this freedom right here to go around and be, create an oval. But not down here. Down here, the southern part of the globe, this aurora looks like this. It never goes on the outside. It stays on the inside, it whirls around here, and goes across in here, and that never happens up here. There's not one space photograph I've ever found where the aurora is going in that hole. <laughs> so what's happening is the aurora is coming and it's going down this, okay, it's going around this, and here it's going back up. And here it's going in. Now none of the scientists recognize this. They don't understand how come it can go in the middle here, but it can't there. It's because there's two cones. There they are. What happens is the aurora at the top, the north, has a space around it. It can move. But it goes in here. You can't see it. You can't see it. This becomes dark. But when the aurora comes back up, okay, when it comes back up, it creates this form. So this form is not coming down into the earth. It's coming out of the earth. This is exactly the way the blood comes out. This right here is the micro valve. This allows the blood to go in. And then after it does this little thing in less than one second, it goes out the aura, which is here. It's more uh, in relationship to size. It's the, here's the micro valve and here's the aura valve. That's what happens in the heart. So. What happens down here is that it gets stopped somehow, it becomes braked. It can't get through this. How come it can't get through that? 